It's 90.3 FM KEXP Seattle. You're listening to Positive Vibrations live in studio. It's subatomic sound system. From Kingston to Brooklyn, I bet them know so we are the top ranking. Oh. From Manhattan, Queens, Long Island, and Bronx, I bet them know so we are the top ranking. sound system culture. It's a tune called Champion Sound. And uh, 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 obviously our group's called a subatomic sound system, but the whole idea behind it is um, sound systems do something unique. But what's special about our sound system, you know, 
everyone's got to be the best, right? You got to aspire to be the best. So what makes us the best is that we're doing a live dub improvisational mix. Dub's normally a studio thing, and this is uh, this is something we're doing live. So I hope people see that and hear that. That this is not the it's not just DJing or someone karaokeing over a track. It's an interaction between technology and, and live human beings. We got that all from a man named Mr. Lee Scratch Perry, who invented this sound. And this next song is a is a tune that uh, many people will know from scratch called Chase the Devil. <clears throat> Son of the morning, I'm gonna chase you out of earth. Subatomic Sound System, live here on 90.3 FM KEXP, Positive Vibrations with Kid Hops. This one is a new song we just put out. This one is called Lee Scratch Perry is the Dub Organizer. Oh, 
tree of cloak and dagger. Music to make you stagger. So don't be like Johnny Dollar who's on the dollar. Right, right.
It's 90.3 FM KEXP Seattle. Let's hear another one from you guys while we're on a roll. What's the name of this one, Screechy? Yeah, man. Now the one on him, Babylon Kingdom, I got drop a ground, AKA Babylon So Fall. Yeah. <laughs> Long time them have we done, you're so a slave hard Warm with the vote and after that you drop yard You reap what we sow and play with like record Think a little bit of corn we will plant in your yard Make your industry expand and then get broad Here trade me see you give with it the reward Plus you change me name from Junta to Award eh? What this song want dear Lord So when you see me with a grow from a family Explores and explores the teaching of his majesty So not all we told now no secret society There ain't no secret in the father's philosophy A true you know humble and you hate people like we One distribute the devil's economic We don't want that the popularity Think a little bit of time them robbery as well Big up the righteous from me so to Israel No make them tell you nothing cause I feel like them tell Them boy de Babylon you must go now
me with that group of my family Observe where I observe the teaching of his majesty No call me coat, no, no secret society I'm hungry, hungry, hungry to find out where my friends I learn my ways, I learn my ways Days on top of days, days Days on top of days Subatomic Sound System live on 90.3 FM KEXP. This configuration of Subatomic Sound System, this current configuration, yes, sir. is about two decades in the making. Yeah. And here we are in 2023 with your unique brand of future looking dub performance. As you and I have talked about in past, EMPSH, um, you know, um, dub mixing has largely been an engineer's craft, a studio-bound uh, artistic expression that's, that's, you know, very seldom performed live. And here we are in 2023 with Subatomic Sound System taking dub center stage, and you four are interacting more like a jazz quartet than studio mastery, right? It's like yeah. live and in the moment and improvisational and, you know, the counterpoint between you and Troy on saxophone where you're versioning reggae standards, you know, folding uh, Yabba Yu's vengeance into the mix there just yeah. for fun. <laughs> versioning those the same way that a jazz soloist may lean on jazz standards in, you know, in an improvised solo. Please talk to me a little bit about this communication that I just got to witness here, because that's incredible. Well, Seeing what you guys are doing live versus having heard all your records, all your recorded material, but seeing this come together and coalesce live is really something special. So please, can you, can you disclose yeah. a little bit about there, that? There's so, so much we could say about it, but I think you really hit the nail on the head, is that what we're doing, it's more like an improvisational jazz band, which is the, the whole idea of dub was improvisational mixing, starting mm -hmm. with people like Lee Scratch Perry back in the 70s. And we wanted to take that live. And the fact is that the technology didn't exist to do it live before. And we just happened to be trying to do it because we love that music. And I happened to just be into computer technology. I came from a background of playing in bands and, and, and uh, being a musician. So when it came time where we got hit up by Lee Scratch Perry to be his band, back after doing some very non-traditional like dubstep mixes of his music in, in 2007, a song called Iron Devil, a, a remix for uh, a dubstep remix for a group called Double Standard who was collaborating with Lee Perry. We got hit up to be the band and they originally wanted me on tour just to be with Scratch doing all this electronic stuff. And I said, no, you know, that's not right. To me, what as a musician, although I love doing all this, using this technology, get these new sounds, what's important to me is having these guys, you know, even when someone said, oh, we're going to talk to you, you're the band leader. It's like, no, man, this is like four people communicating. We're, we're all equal. This computer is just like another band member. You know, the saxophone, the congas, Screechy, as a vocalist, even different than, than an average vocalist who's going to go up there and sing their song and everyone's following the vocalist, he's listening to all of us. He's singing off the saxophone, off the congas, off whatever music I'm playing. And so it really is an improvisation. And to me, that's the most special thing about a music performance. If I want to go see a music performance, I want to see that chemistry between people interacting and creating something on the spot. And most people think that's not possible with computers. And most performance these days is so coordinated with people playing like 
pre-recorded mixes even, mm -hmm. not even just pre-recorded tracks, pre-recorded mixes synchronized with lights and, and uh, you know, smoke, and they're up there doing like an aerobics routine, and like, it's, to me, all that choreography can be great if you look at it as that type of theater, but it's not like actually making music, and I think our whole goal has been to like make music as a, as a band, and you know, I don't want to over talk because I feel like <clears throat> every individual in this band can speak to that because that's what backgrounds they come from. And partly we we're forced together to do it by Lee Perry. And that's his great talent as a producer and artist is to get creativity out of people that they didn't know was there. So I think it's been a great gift for us to work with Lee Scratch Perry and the, the way he pushed us and our creativity to be something special, to be what we are, was to figure out how to make his music live and in doing so figure out a whole new performance for a new format for live performance which i think to be honest i think almost ev anyone and everyone could be using this format to make music these days because so much music is being made in the computer and then people aren't sure how to perform it live they don't know how to create an a, an, a performance with chemistry and interaction and i think dub has been the blueprint and the door that opened up to let us do that um, feel really lucky to have done that. A lot of people, even musicians, wouldn't understand it. And I think all these guys, Larry, Troy, and Screechy, are on that wavelength to be able to do it. So I think it's, a, it's been a gift to us, and it's unique. And I, I love to share it to people and get the reaction you just gave us. Well, it's outstanding. And you know, each, each of the four of you has a, you know, a very accomplished musical history and a very robust musical performance and recording history, and then to see you four come together, um, it's, it's even greater than the sum of the parts, which is lovely to experience. Um, we, you know, you four and I had the opportunity to, to catch up a little bit before this session, and the, um, the rapport that you four have together was really on display. Um, it's just like pure jokes and sarcasm nonstop, and you guys are having a lot of fun. I'm sure um, you know you spend a lot of time on the road together. Mm -hmm. How how does that friendship dynamic factor into your time on the road together and and kind of you know helping you persevere through challenging situations as you're traveling from one particular <clears throat> performance to the next, because I know uh, there's a lot behind the scenes that is challenging to navigate, right, as, yeah. as you're uh, on the road performing. And how does that friendship help keep those uh, spirits afloat as you're going through those tougher moments? Yeah, I, you know what? I would like to defer this question to the godfather of touring, Mr. Larry McDonald. I think... What, Troy and I often talk about how, you know, having Larry in the band who's done this for so long, he's, he's an inspiration on so many levels, but the fact that he's just so comfortable being out on the, on the road and, and just flowing with all those challenges, it's like uh, he lets us know, like, to follow his lead, more or less. So, I don't know, Larry, Mac, talk, talk to us. What's the secret? Well, well like, you got to lean into that mic, though. This one? Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. So, I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> because, like, traditionally my instrument doesn't really, isn't really in a lot of things. But my being here is a culmination of my playing lifestyle, of trying to adopt what I do to whatever else is going on. And you're asking about on the road with these guys. <laughs> I mean, how do you know I even like these guys? <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's what I'm trying to get to. Because, you know, it's very apparent to me you guys have a you know, whole lot of humor that is keeping you afloat yeah, as we, you travel around the planet. Yeah, well, I, when I got a call um, to do this gig, I completely shined it on because I saw EMCH. I, I thought it was somebody's Facebook handle or something <laughs> like that. So, so I looked at it and I read the content. I said, oh man. 
And then he called me and says, hey, Larry, this is Imps. I said, oh, shit, that's how you pronounce it? <laughs> so that's when I realized it was no prank, you know? <laughs> so he said, so we're we doing this thing with, um, with um, Scratch. And the percussionist we had couldn't do it any longer or for whatever reason. And I thought about it. I say, what the hell? I never run away from a challenge <laughs> musically. So I'm here, and because of our various musical backgrounds, the stuff that we bring to it is not OK. Like, I couldn't duplicate the stuff that I did here a while ago. I'd have to listen to it and learn it. Hmm. I couldn't like those. I remember where I was and what I, I basically, but to play everything exactly, I wouldn't even want to do that. It's in the moment. You know, I wouldn't even want, because that was done, that's, that's that performance. I'm looking forward to what the mixture of all four of us is going to yeah. bring on the next thing, because it doesn't necessarily, nothing necessarily <laughs> follows anything in this outfit. So Larry, are you telling me that your creative partnership with, with these three yeah. is pushing your personal creativity to evolve even still after decades of percussion success globally and all the records that you've played on and all the artists that you've supported, this unique blend is pushing you to evolve creatively yeah. now. It, 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 yes, <laughs> because... Talk, tell, like, tell the mic, Larry. Tell the mic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get me carried away here. <laughs> you get all caught up in the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of the fact that my entire playing career has been spent finding things to play within the context of whatever is facing me, right? I remember. Uh, Tommy McCook, leader of the Scatterlies, he told me in a jazz session one day, when I first started going to those sessions, he says, look, you can play anything you want, just don't get in anybody else's way. <laughs> I spent my lifetime doing that, and at the same time, trying to find stuff to, that stays current, you know, not off the wall current, but I can fit in anything. I think my work with the scatterlights as that, that I do at the moment is like me coming full circle, coming home. The past and the future colliding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back, back, back to back. And, and, and then going from, well, when I leave here, I'm going to the scatterlights. So, <laughs> I mean, hip hop in between both of them, it keeps me on my toes, you know what I'm saying? And I feel pretty good that I've been able to like fit in and people call me for work and <laughs> stuff like that, you know? Larry, I remember the time Scratch told you and you said it was one of the greatest compliments from, from someone, but especially if someone from Scratch doesn't ha hand out compliments so easily. He said to Larry, he said, Larry, you, you play the drums like a piano player because Larry's got the three drums to and low to high and the mm -hmm. way he fits in with the music, it's like, it's so musical. And when Larry was talking about just doing things in the moment and not mm -hmm. necessarily remembering it and we're not wanting to remember it, that reminded me of a time Scratch talked to us about his whole approach to music, especially live. He said that um, he never w wanted to sing a song the same way twice because if he did, it would be dishonest because he wants to sing exactly the words and the melodies he's feeling at every given moment and that you know, sometimes people say, oh, Scratch, he's not really a singer, you know, he's doing blah, 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 you know, talking, maybe he sings a note off key. He was like, I never sing a note off key. Every note I sing, Ja tells me to sing that note. And that was the right note to sing at that time, because even if it didn't sound right then, it's the note that's going to lead me to the next note and the next one. And eventually I'm going to hit the one that's the, the perfect, you know, the perfect phrases. And I think that idea, like, Everyone in here is about that. Even especially this last song we just played on Babylon Soon Fall. It's like we've played all these songs so many times. They've been played before by other people in some cases. We do our own thing with it and we do something that feels right like 
how we're feeling off each other right now. And it's that that honesty. If you're just playing totally pre-recorded music, it's you know you, you've captured a moment and you're you're just replaying it. But to be able to do this sort of combination where it keeps an authenticity to your you know the moment that connects with people who are there with you in the moment too and what they're feeling. I think you know we're we're interacting off each other, but it's also the energy of everyone in this room because ultimately that's what music is about. It's about that exchange of energy. And in a live environment, we're going to play differently depending on who the people are in the room and the energy they're giving back to us too, you know? I have a question for Troy. Yes. Troy Mobius, who's performing saxophone here. And, you know, kind of following along yes, yes. with this theme of sonic evolution Troy, you are bringing so many Ethiopian scales and East African tonalities into the mix in your performances with Subatomic Sound System. Um, please talk to me a little bit about that and, and what you were hearing in Lee Scratch Perry's music in those original earlier recordings mm -hmm. and how this continued emphasis on East African tonalities is uh, an evolution. Right, right. Hmm. Well, with starting with Lee, I remember being most impressed by on the Super Ape album, um, War in a Babylon. The horns are just mixed. The way he mixes the horns, they're soft, but they're loud, you know? Like he reversed the, dy reversed the dynamic. And they became bigger, you know? And I'm just like, that, that, that was kind of mind blowing to me just in, in terms of, of an approach. You yeah, know? Like beyond melodically. Right, just dynamically. Like, specifically yeah. that song, Troy, you're talking about. I remember I was uh -huh. trying to figure out how to recreate one of those horn parts for um, a, a recording and I didn't even realize it was a horn. I thought it was a guitar part right. and I couldn't get it right. I was a guitar player, I was messing with it. And then I called Troy one day, I was like, yo, you're not gonna believe it. This, this little hook and in War in a Babylon, I finally figured it out. It was a trombone. And I yeah, played it with exactly. a sample of the trombone and filtered it and put some effect on it. And I was like, oh my God, it's like, he, like he was painting with sound. Uh -huh. Lee Perry was painting with sound. And all of us, like whether it's the computer, the drums or the saxophone, it's like, we're learning to just like think about frequencies. Like Troy and I talk about that a lot. Like we're just, we're making frequencies and we're using whatever tools are individually in our hands, but it's like, right. You know, so bringing that approach, or just be becoming aware of that, you know, spatial um, relationship between the live and the recorded. You know, this is essentially it's lived up, which is almost you know contradictory in the term itself, yeah. right? It's like it's an oxymoron. It's post post production live, you mm -hmm. know, but that erases the line, so then you can. I recorded a lot, most of the horns, pretty much all of the horns with Omar yeah. and, and uh, yeah, maybe Ruben some additional people, but every horn you exactly. hear in the recorded version, every every bit of this music, none of these are backing tracks. Every little bit we create, created. I create most exactly. of the part, all the horns uh, Troy created. In some cases, there's percussion from Larry that's in there. So exactly. it's like we're playing off ourselves. It's almost like yeah, defy or, the, the or like process. embedding embedding your you know code from the, the initial point of, of creation and then pretty much ex extrapolating, you know. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Screechy, I have some questions for you because you're bringing an, you know, an awful lot of charisma and presence to subatomic sound system. And um, you had shared earlier with me some information about the vibrance of the neighborhood in which you grew up and all the sound systems and all the characters <coughs> that were in all the yards adjacent to your home. Um, world famous musicians. World all just famous like chilling musicians. in your backyard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. How, what are the bits that you are kind of gleaning from each of these influences and bringing into your own sound? Because you have a very Singular, idiosyncratic, unique yeah. uh, sonic presentation. Nobody sounds like Screechy Dan. And you know, uh, probably um, this was years ago, um, uh, I actually 
I actually gave myself a, a, a title, Mr. Inestimable, because people always ask, they like confused, don't know how to place me. What, what do you, are you a, are you a DJ, a DJ, you sing, you're, what, what do you do? I say, I just, I'm inestimable, just, yeah, <laughs> you can't estimate what I am, so just leave it as that. But um, to answer your question, um, you know, um, taking piece of everything and everyone, I think everybody and everything musical is in me. I, I came pinpoint whatever it is, but um, when, I, when I came to realization that I could actually sing, this, um, opposed to um, chatting, I was amazed myself. <laughs> and, you know, and I remember somebody put on a hip hop beat one, one day when I was younger in school. And I find myself was rapping, and I was like, wow. I stepped back, I said, that's me. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I mean, I, it's a natural thing. And um, as, as Ems and Larry said earlier with, the, with um, improvising, I think all of us possess that. I think we are related um, musically where, where, where that is concerned. And that's, that is why the universe put us together and have us like this. So, yeah, man. Um, and my slogan. My slogan, if you read my bio, my slogan said, like the Jamaican coat of farm said, out of many, one. Mm -hmm. Well, my slogan is, out of one comes many. So Flipped it upon them. Yeah, we flipped it upon them. <laughs> so that speaks for itself. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yo, I want to say my own comments on Screechy that he may, you know, doesn't want to brag about, but... He's amazing at doing, like he said, not just singing and chatting, but like he'll sing and chat like different eras. It's almost and, 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 like suddenly he sounds like, you know, the great style of like the 70s chatter. Then the next thing he flips to a dance hall track. But what's amazing to me about it is, sir, there are a lot of people who are great at mimicking other musicians or it sounds like, oh, that sounds just like so and so. That sounds just like so and so. He goes through all these styles but it sounds like him, and that's mm -hmm. really, to me, like almost unheard of. Like he can go chatting, singing across different eras, and for what we do, especially once we start working with Scratch and going back and playing the older music, but then we'd flip it like the next tune, all of a sudden do some very electronic, almost, you know, dubstep or drum and bass track. Like we, when we started with Scratch, we did even a wider array, and I think as time moved on, we started to kind of meld it into one sound that had new and old elements in it. But Screechy, like on this new track we just put out, you know, um, Lee Scratch Perry's the dub organizer. It's like Screechy goes back and emulates that sound. It's like transports you back in time, like you're listening to the '70s recording, but then also flips it with a different energy. I like one of the greatest reviews I thought we got of our Super 8 Returns to Conquer album, which Screechy was all over. Besides Scratch, he did all the hooks, all the singing, all the harmonies to the point where people didn't even think like, well, this is all one guy doing that? When I told people, yeah, you know, this is all one guy. But one reviewer said, I think it was from Rhythm Magazine in um, big, you know, big mm -hmm. reggae magazine said, you know, I listened to this album and I, I was really feeling it. But then I kind of thought to myself, and we put this out in 2017, I think that was like the 40th anniversary of the Super Ape album, originally done in 1976. He said, I, I really enjoyed it, but I kind of wondered, like, what they just sort of re redid it. What was different? And then he said he went back and listened to the original album afterwards, and he was like blown away because he he said the new album sounds like what I remember the old album sounding like. But when I listened to the old album, I realized like, no, like this, it's different. And I think that's the whole idea behind what we're doing with Subatomic is like taking all these roots in the past, like Larry said, you know, working with the Scatolites from back in the 60s and Cal Ossie at the foundation of reggae and putting it in a context where people who maybe, you know, a lot of times for people going back to a different era of music, it sounds dated to them or they can't connect, but this has everything that people are used to hearing in music now, the fullness, like the deep sub bass is a big, big characteristic of what we do, you know, the the hard-hitting drums that people are used to and, and the music that's all been inspired by this dub, but it's done in a context that has the old and the new together, and I think it helps people connect to it more, and, and it preserves something that's, you know, 
the the roots. I think there's something special in the in the in the roots of this music, and especially coming from Jamaica, these guys are part of a history that is often overshadowed in in popular music, and um, I just feel like it's it's important work to to create a connection to the past if we're going to move forward in the future in the best way. If you don't know what you're taking from and what you're building on, then you don't have a solid foundation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hopefully these new recordings are a doorway for new fans to discover, you know, this vast catalog of inspired music that awaits them, right? Yeah, 100%. It's an it's not just music, it's an invitation into a whole other world. I like that. Is there anything else that you guys want to touch upon before we wrap up here? Some more music. And sh and sh should write my next bio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say one last thing about, you know, the name Subatomic. Like, we, I don't think we even realized, I, I came across that name when, but before I even started working with these guys, it was just like, yeah, this is a cool name. We're, do, we're doing, you know, a lot of bass heavy music, we're using these sub bass and atomic, you know, explosive, blah, blah, blah. It sounds, it's a dynamic name. But then I started to learn about, like, uh, you know, the physics of subatomic, at the lowest molecular level, everything we have around us, ourselves, our bodies, our cells, are all vibrations. And when I learned that, I thought, wow, this is crazy. Like, music is actually like the DNA of, uh, of existence. Everything around us, every, what we think are like these solid surfaces, <laughs> what we think are these solid surfaces, this is all moving and vibrating. Everything is vibrating. And what I think, you know, one of my questions I think about in life is why am I drawn to, to, to music? You know, it's like the, uh, you know, music is not an easy, it's a, not an easy life. You have these great moments of joy, but, you know, I think it's because music is vibration. You're actually, you're, you're communing with the very fundamental level of creation. And when you're creating music and everyone's on the same vibration, it's like, it reinforces the oneness of creation. See, and all, and it kind of existence. taps into what I was, the second part of the question that you asked me earlier about the Ethiopian, um, like in East African mm -hmm. scales. And yeah, music is, is using that DNA ancest ancestral um, yeah, frequency. And music, I feel, is the ultimate medium to instant instantaneously tap into that connection between you and, and the collective ancestry, ancestral gathering in a sense. Travels time. For real, yeah. So a lot of the scales, especially the Ethiopian minor pentatonic, it brings, it almost opens up gateways, you know? And it's, it's a familiar vocabulary, but it's still kind of foreign. It's, it's rooted, it's so roots. And um, the coming together of, of this crew right here, it's, we're all coming back, coming from different roots you know, different generations. Yeah, so. different generations. Yeah, man. So. I mean, there's a band that sends generate. I mean, I want to blow Larry out, but he's got his 86th birthday coming up. We've at times have people in the band who are in their 20s, so it's like, what bands? You know, and of course, Lee, you know, was the same age as Larry, so it's like... Uh, Octogenarians. Yeah, yeah what, band, what band is rolling with that kind of spectrum, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what Troy's talking about with the with the the connection to history. I think it's like words can transmit ideas over time, but music can translate feelings over time. And that's something something special. Same, and same. going back to, you know, this older music, like Ethiopian music and culture, some of the oldest in, in the world as far as as far as we know uh, of humanity. So going back to like the music that humanity first started creating has evolved over such a long stretch of time, like that's that's powerful because why did we start creating music in the first place? Message, what was the what was the drive within that? Yeah, yeah it was to connect to some sort of vibration. And I think people, relevant. as time goes by, it's very easy for people to lose touch with it, especially in today's world where music is like a commodity. It's just like it's used to create an emotion to get people in advertisements and ads and stuff. But music is a spiritual thing, and I just talking about all this, I want to bring again the connection that we had to Lee. I remember he said to us, he's like, you know, even with reggae, he, he was disappointed on what became of it. He said that he got into dub because 
he wanted to have always something spiritual in his music. And mm. to me, that's like a, it's a crucial part of what we do. And it's, whether it's like a serious thing or, or, or we're laughing or having fun, it's like, it's got to connect to the spirit and back to the, the source vibration that makes it important. Subatomic. Yes. Subatomic. Oh, yeah. Well, as you continue to create new music, a new expression that is deeply informed <laughs> by these vast musical histories, What's next for you guys? And how can people keep tabs on what you're doing next? What's the best way for folks to follow along and, yeah. and keep up to date with subatomic sound well, system? That's we their are. problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard enough for us to do it, let alone, you know, worry about it. Was, was Larry's to, favorite expression with Scratch was trying to hold on to a tiger's tail. That's like, yo, if you're down with subatomic, you just got to hold on to the tiger's tail. Well, if you let go, you get eaten. <laughs> if you let go, you get eaten. But yeah, I mean, of course, like subatomicsound.com is a website where we always put up all the crucial information. But I'd say like the day to day and what's going on. We have an Instagram, just subatomic. And, you know, we're always putting up little stuff about what, we work at, what we're working on, our shows we just did, our shows coming up. And, you know, we've had like some great opportunities to connect to artists across a different spectrum. I think for us, it's yeah, just to get to keep building on what we built with Lee is really important, you know? We, you talk about our friendship earlier. I was almost like getting sad, just thinking like he's not here anymore because <clears throat> it's like what we built, we built with him, like for him. But it was like a gift he gave us to, uh, you know, give true. back to ourselves. True, mm -hmm. true. And a gift that he shared with you to sh continue to share with people worldwide, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's really special. Yeah. Yeah. Well, many, many thanks. I really appreciate our time together. This has been a joy. Yeah. Thank so you. So many you thanks, Sweetie thank Dan. Many thank times. you, Emch. Yeah. Larry, thank you. Troy, thank you. Thank you. Subatomic yes. Sound System here on 90.3 KEXP. Mm. Discover great music at kexp.org.